Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at the process of primary hemostasis. This is the first step involved in stopping us from bleeding out. Now there's two steps in hemostasis. There's primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. I've done a video on secondary hemostasis, also known as the clotting cascade. I suggest you watch after this video, but let's take a look at primary hemostasis. <laughs> So to begin, let's orientate ourselves. We have a number of busted up blood vessels here and I've got some titles to them. Because in primary hemostasis, there's a couple of different stages, right? The very first stage is called vasoconstriction. We're gonna talk about that first. Then the second stage is platelet adhesion. The third stage, which we're gonna look at in two parts, is platelet activation. We're gonna look at it in part A and part B. And then we're gonna take a look at the final stage, which is platelet aggregation. Effectively, by the end of all this, so by the end of platelet aggregation, we should have formed what we call a platelet plug. Not a clot, but a plug. That's important because what we're gonna talk about in this video is some of the disorders that can occur that result in platelet problems and bleeding issues, but also some of the drugs that can be used to address different stages to help people from or prevent them from clotting. We'll get there. Okay, let's begin with vasoconstriction. So. You've got damage to a blood vessel. You don't want to bleed out. The very first thing that happens is a uh, vasospasm. So the blood vessel constricts to limit the blood moving past. How does this happen? Well, you've got what we can see here, lining the inside of the blood vessels, we've got endothelial cells. So these are the epithelia of the red blood cell. Now these endothelial cells, when they die and they burst open like this, they can release chemicals. And one important chemical they release is one called endothelin-1. And endothelin-1 is a potent vasoconstrictor. So it will tell this blood vessel to constrict. Now when it tells this blood vessel to constrict, obviously it's narrowing, limiting the amount of blood going past. Great, it's not gonna stop bleeding, but it's gonna help us in the early stages of limit bleeding out. Then the next step, platelet adhesion. So now we have to bring the platelets into play. Now, an important point here is that we have all these endothelial cells, right? Endothelia, like I said, are epithelia, and all epithelia which line our body, they sit upon a basement membrane. Basically, what I'm saying is these cells sit upon connective tissue, such as collagen. So when they're damaged, collagen is exposed, right? So you're gonna have all this exposed collagen. Now collagen is a protein, it's mostly negatively charged. That's also an important point to highlight. These epithelial cells also produce something important. The thing that it produces is called von Willebrand factor. And we'll be writing that up as VWF. So these cells, uh, endothelial cells, produce von Willebrand factor and they will bind to the collagen. So let's label the collagen just so we can see what's going on. So we've got the collagen and we're gonna have von Willebrand factor connected to it, VWF. And let's do one here as well. We've got a von Willebrand factor here, brilliant. Now. We haven't even introduced a platelet yet. So what the platelets will be doing is the platelets actually, as they enter the blood, this particular area of the blood vessel, they actually will roll down or along the blood vessel wall until they get to the exposed collagen and von Willebrand factor. And what platelets have brilliantly are receptors for von Willebrand factor. So let's draw another one up here. So here's a platelet. So let's write platelet so you know what it is. And it's got a receptor for von Willebrand factor. This receptor is a G protein receptor. And so it's called GP for G protein 1B. G protein 1B, that's the name. It's important because we'll talk about a disease that affects GP1B. So now we've got is the platelets have adhered to the site. That's all that's happened. Platelets have adhered. All right, brilliant. What's the next step? Well, now we need to activate these platelets. So once that platelet is bound, 
some important things happen. Simultaneously, secondary hemostasis is happening. So secondary hemostasis triggered by the damaged blood vessel triggers the clotting cascade. Now, after you go through all those various factors, a really important uh, product is produced called thrombin. Okay, and thrombin's gonna start this platelet activation. So let's just draw up our collagen again. Let's draw up the von Willebrand factor. There's our von Willebrand factor. We've got our platelet with its GB1B receptor on it, right? And it's bound to it. Now, what happens is that thrombin is produced and thrombin will bind to a thrombin receptor. So there's now going to be another receptor on this platelet, and this is a thrombin receptor. So here's thrombin. Brilliant. Now thrombin is bound to a receptor that's called PAR1. So this is a protease activated receptor one. Thrombin binds to it. This triggers an intracellular reaction, right? That causes the granules. Now remember platelets have granules. Triggers the granules to be released from the platelet. Now what's in these granules? Well, a couple of important things. Adenosine diphosphate, ADP, serotonin, and more von Willebrand factor. Now there's other things, there's like growth factors and platelet activating factors and calcium, but these are some very important ones. So these are in the granules that are being released due to the binding of thrombin via the PAR1 receptor. Now a couple of things, serotonin is actually another vasoconstrictor. So it further helps constrict that blood vessel. So that's good. Von Willebrand factor, that's great. More of it can travel down and bind to the collagen to help more platelets bind. Brilliant. What does ADP do? Okay, so ADP will, and now we're gonna to go to part B, ADP will bind to ADP receptors back on the platelet. That's interesting. So let's draw this up again. Collagen. Von Willebrand factor. Platelet. And now we're gonna have the ADP binding to an ADP receptor. Remember we also had thrombin bound, right? So let's draw up the bound thrombin as well, because that's going to be important. So let's drop the bound thrombin. And we said that the thrombin is bound by PAR1. The ADP is bound by a P2Y12 receptor. Now the reason why I'm telling you this, I don't often say receptors, is because they're actually important when it comes to some drugs. All right. So when both thrombin and ADP bind, they stimulate activation, which is part of this process and then leads to the next step of this particular platelet. Now, one of the things that it does is it triggers, again, it's triggering intracellular processes and one of those processes is to tell an enzyme called COX-1 to trigger the production and release of something called thromboxane. Throm Boxane, thromboxane A2. Cox, now, I, yeah, Cox1 triggers thromboxane A2. Thromboxane A2 will bind back to thromboxane receptors and further trigger activation. So what are the three things that trigger activation, right? Three things that trigger activation is thrombin is a big one. ADP is a big one and thromboxane is a big one. And I haven't even said what active, what this activation really is, right? So there are three triggers to trigger this activation. Now thromboxane, importantly, thromboxane A2 
also triggers vasoconstriction. So again, it's all sort of feeding in upon each other. Now, what ends up happening here is that part of this activation is that this changes its shape. The platelet changes its shape because of thrombin binding, ADP binding, and thromboxane binding, right? It changes its shape. So we're gonna draw that up with it because it's part of platelet aggregation. So let's have a look. Again, we've got the collagen present. We're gonna have the von Willebrand factor, right? We're gonna have the binding through that GB1B. And now the platelet has been activated by thrombin, AB, ADP, thromboxane, and now it becomes spiky. So these little arms or legs, so are called pseudopods. Pseudopods, meaning fake arms, but it makes it sticky. It also starts to tell receptors inside to come to the surface. So more receptors, right? And these receptors are called, again, terrible names, G, P, 2, B, and 3, A. G, B, 2, B, and 3, A. And what they do, so I said thrombin comes in from the clotting cascade, that's one product. Another one is gonna be fibrinogen. So fibrinogen comes in, and that's going to bind to G, P, 2, B, and 3, A. So that's fibrinogen, right? Now, what happens is that you're gonna have more platelets come in that are getting activated, right? More platelets, they get activated, so they become pseudopodic. They have their arms coming out, which means they also have those receptors, which then allow for the fibrinogen to bind. So now you've got, so again, this is gonna have another receptor on it, a GP2B3A, and you're gonna have the fibrinogen bind to it, which means another platelet can come along, get activated, right, and bind to it. So now we're forming a plug. All these platelets are coming along and forming a plug because of the GP2B3A receptor after it's been activated. So we've got all these processes happening. Now, I don't usually go into this much detail with things, but it's important because there are some very important diseases and disorders that can happen. Three important disorders of platelet aggregation that are associated with primary hemostasis. What are they? Well, two of them are associated with platelet adhesion. So these two are called, actually I'll write it here, Von Willebrand disease. This results in a uh, disorder of Von Willebrand factor. So you have a genetic disorder which does not allow for Von Willebrand factor to be produced. What does that mean? That means you will not have platelet adhesion. So this, the start of this whole process can't occur. So you have a problem with forming a platelet plug and platelets adhering. Another one is called Bernard Solier syndrome. And Bernard Solier syndrome is a problem with GP1B, right? So von Willebrand factor, that's a problem with unsurprisingly, von Willebrand factor, and Bernard Solier syndrome is a problem with GP1B. So again, both are platelet adhesion, resulting in pretty much the same issue. The platelet will not bind to the collagen, right? So that's two. A third one is called Glassman thrombo thrombosthenia, and that is a problem here. So this is an issue with the GP2B and 3A, right? So what we end up having here in this particular process is if you have a problem here, you can get Glassman thrombosthenia, right? And that results in a problem with this particular receptor. So that means the fibrinogen can't form bridges between platelets and it can't form a platelet plug 
coming in. So now we've got these three disorders and that is a platelet aggregation issue. Now what about drugs? Okay, so there are some important drugs that are on the market. So one drug called clopidogrel, clopidogrel, is an antagonist of the, PT, uh, the P2Y12. Let's see if I can spell the drug. You know I'm not good at this. Clopidogrel. So clopidogrel inhibits P2Y12. So that means if you inhibit the ADP from binding, which is what this will do, it inhibits the activation of the platelet, so it reduces platelet um, activation, reducing platelet aggregation. So this might be given to individuals in which you don't want their platelets to aggregate. There is also another drug which affects the GP2B3A as well. So obviously not an inherited disorder, but this is a drug which has a, a tricky name, which is E-P-T-I-F-I-B-A-T-I-D-E. Eptifa, Epti, Fibotide, eptif, ibotide, eptifibotide, eptifibotide, something like that, I'm sure. It inhibits GP2B3A. Brilliant. Now the final one, which you're all aware of, is going to be one that inhibits thromboxane. Hmm, what's that? Well, that's going to be our NSAIDs. Aspirin. Because what it actually inhibits is COX-1, right? Aspirin, for example, ibuprofen, right? These are just some examples of drugs that inhibit thromboxane. Again, reducing the platelet aggregation and activation. So this is primary hemostasis. I'm Dr. Mike and I hope that helps. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.